Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Allen. I'm a business owner, uh, the lead of several open source projects, and a tech writer. My main focus right now is on documentation tooling. Uh, my, my company, OpenDevise, develops an open source platform named Antora, and it aims to make documentation writing easy, collaborative, and scalable. And I'm here today to show you uh, that very tool so you can see how to create professional documentation sites. So first of all, why all this attention on docs? Um, this is DevOps. We want to talk about tech, right? Well, I assure you we'll get there. Uh, my team and I wanted to invest uh, our time and energy into solving a problem in tech that we thought would have a real impact. And for us, that problem is docs. Uh, to many users, the quality of documentation actually reflects the quality of the software. You know, it forms a first impression, and, but also a lasting one as they come back to it. So that's why I like to say that documentation is the curb appeal of software. And as any real estate agent will tell you, uh, the curb appeal is often a crucial factor in the decision to buy. So to back up that statement, a recent analysis by Redmonk had concluded that good docs were actually a deciding factor in software um, adoption nearly half the time. And as software developers, it should come as no surprise to you that there's plenty of room for improvement in documentation. In fact, a 2017 survey conducted by GitHub had concluded that incomplete and outdated documentation was an extremely pervasive problem observed by an astounding 93% of the respondents. So clearly, by combining these last two points, improving the curb appeal by investing in documentation, it's a surefire way to get a leg up over the competition. Docs are also integral to the software development process itself. They affect almost everyone, either uh, the team is a creator or the team is a consumer. But everyone touches it in some way. So the state of documentation could actually impact the ability to do a software release. It could be the difference between holding it up or shipping a polished one on time. And while serving our clients, we've been really frustrated by the limited set of documentation platforms that are out there. Uh, the, the platforms that we tried to implement either had the wrong scope or they required that writers would have a deep knowledge of the web stack. And since our clients prefer writing an ASCII doc, the lack of a, a platform dedicated specifically to ASCII doc was, was a particular problem for us. So we set out to fill out these gaps by creating Antora. So Antora is a static site generator designed to create documentation sites from ASCII doc documents that are sourced from multiple Git repositories. In other words, you write the content in ASCII doc, you feed it to Antora, out comes a documentation site. But under the covers, Antora is using ASCII Doctor to convert uh, ASCII doc to HTML and to enrich the content. And although ASCII Doctor plays an important role in the docs pipeline, uh, it's Antora that actually handles the big picture of the publishing of the site. So they work together in tandem. So with countless site generators out there, like Jekyll and Hugo and JBake and even wikis and CMSs, why not just use one of those? Well, as I mentioned before, they're just general purpose tools. And they few are well suited for large scale documentation sites and the concerns that documentation has in particular. And given the complexity of documentation, the last thing that you need to be doing is retooling a static site generator to serve the needs of documentation. And although we've seen plenty of organizations go down that rabbit hole, it never ends well. So Antor is a, a specialized static site generator. It's specifically di designed for creating doc sites, handling docs concerns, and using ASCII doc as the primary format of writing. So as experienced tech writers ourselves, we had a very specific goal in mind when we put Antor together. We wanted to provide a go-to solution for what we, so we call docs as code. In other words, we want to produce documentation sites from distributed content by reusing conventions, processes, and tools from software development. You know, we're software developers ourselves, so we know this. I'll briefly touch on the features of Antora that help to achieve this goal, and then I'll give you a brief demo of Antora so you can see in action. So we recognize that content can't be owned by the, the website itself, and it's also not owned by any one repository or branch. That's why Antora allows content to be distributed. So sometimes content is stored with the code, sometimes it's stored in a repository next to the code, and sometimes it's split across multiple repositories and using a hybrid approach. So regardless, Antora can find it. This means that we do need to agree, though, on a standard project structure so when Antora goes looking for docs, it knows that it's found them. 
So Antora itself is a Git client. It starts out by cloning or fetching multiple Git repositories and branches, and then it aggregates all the content that it finds. And while crawling those repositories, as I mentioned, it expects to find a standard project structure. In other words, it's looking for a docs project. And it's similar to a code project. And, and at the root of that project is a project file called antora.yaml. And this file, which we'll see in a moment, at the moment it tells Antor which component and versions these files belong to. In the future, it could do more. So after pulling all that content and metadata together, Antor is building and organizing what we call a content catalog. And this catalog is then what gets fed to the generator to build the site. So these are kind of two different steps. Antora knows which repositories and branches and start paths to scan or clone based on this simple inventory in a file we refer to as a playbook. Now, if software is versioned, the documentation, it stands to reason the documentation needs to be versioned as well. So that's why uh, uh, Antora understands this. So documentation components, you could think of them as products, are a top-level construct in Antora, and versions of those components are also a first-class citizen. And each component is typically scoped to a GET repository, and each version scoped to a branch, but there's no direct coupling. Every resource in the documentation is going to be associated with one of these what we call component versions. And the way it knows which file goes with which component version is, as I mentioned before, this antora.yaml file. And it simply says, even though I'm in a Git repository, even though I'm in a branch, this is how you should identify yourself. And it has some other metadata as well. Now, since Antora is providing this Git client that pulls in content from repos and branches, it means that you can use branches to track versions just like you do with software. And once the files are read from those branches, the repository and branches, they fade in the background. What matters is the metadata that it pulled. And that's that metadata, along with the files, it's what's made available to the, to the UI templates and the page content in order to build out the site. Uh, they can do things like make references between pages, even across components and versions. And you could do things like navigate between multiple versions of the same page. The other key thing in Antora is that it separates the, the UI. So the UI is a dedicated project, and it provides the front end. You can think of it as the actual web page, the framing of the web page. And that project will export a bundle, which Antora then consumes. So the reason this model matters is it completely separates the content from the UI. So everything in the documentation repositories is just pure content. It's ASCII doc files in the a supporting assets. And the theme and all the user interactions are in the UI project, which is the in the domain of the web developer. That way, the, a single UI can be applied to all of the different components and versions. The site generator, the going back to that playbook file, then just specifies the URL where this bundle is located. And this allows you to easily do A-B testing with themes or you know, swap in different uh, themes. And finally, Antora is designed to use tools that are familiar to software teams. So first, you write content in ASCII doc. That's going to feel like writing source code. It's a semantically rich, plain text authoring format that all you need to edit is an IDE or a plain text editor. And when publishing, you run Antora as part of a CI pipeline, sometimes with your documentation, I mean, so your software pipeline. Uh, and the jobs that, that build out the website can be triggered via webhooks that are activated by activity that's going on into the content repositories. All right, so I'm now I, to circle back to the goal, I want to give you a high-level view of how Antora is running before we dive into the demo. So let's say we're editing some content, and you merge that in. So you'll commit that to Git, and some sort of webhook will fire. That'll kick off a CI job. So now we enter into the CI server. That starts up the job, installs or initializes Antora, and then it clones the playbook repository. So the playbook repository is like the manifest of what it's going to do to make this doc site. It doesn't have the content. And it runs Antora on that playbook. And that was the inventory of the repositories I showed you earlier. And that playbook is what tells Antora what, conte um, what content to read. So moving forward in the pipeline, it clones the content repositories. And it also downloads the UI kind of at the same time. And all that's happening in parallel. And once it gets all that information, builds up the catalog, now it's going to start generating the site. And uh, just as a little tidbit, this is where sort of you can tap into the pipeline and, and build extensions on Antora. So it generates the site, then it writes it out to a folder or a zip file or even to a remote server. And somehow you're going to then sync that up in your CI job 
you're going to sync that up, maybe using like an S3 upload or S3 sync up to the web server or CDN infrastructure. And that may need to reload and reload rewrite rules and all that stuff. And then out comes your site. So that's, that's the high level pictures. You can see where Antor fits into the pipeline. Now let's observe Antor at work from the command line. And what we'll be using here is the Couchbase doc. So Couchbase recently migrated all their documentation to Antora. So if you were to go to docs.couchbase.org, um, actually, sorry, docs.couchbase.com, that's a mistake, you would see, uh, you would see the, the produced website. So let's jump over and see what happens here. All right, do we see the terminal? Yes, OK, let's put that in full screen. Cursor. Oh, there we go. So the first thing you would do is you would do some sort of an installation. So we would say install Antora CLI and the site generator. And the reason I point this out is we've actually separated. So the CLI and the site generator are two different packages because you could have your own site generator. So you can actually reuse a lot of Antora's infrastructure. It's kind of an open book, if you will. All right, so say we run that. I'm not going to run it now, but you, you run that. Now we have Antora command. OK, and so now we have this playbook file. And this is what I had shown before. And it's very simple manifest. It just says basic information about the site, where we're going to clone uh, the content, and then which UI we're going to use, and a couple other pieces of information. So if you run Antor on that, oh, let's do a listing. So first, let's remove the folder. All right, so at this point, oh, forgot the flag. So I'm going to ask it to uh, run. It's going to clone the repositories. You see the progress bar there. And then it goes in the background and builds out the site. And when it's finished, it's going to put the site into the public folder. Now, a very important thing to know is that oops, we need one more browser here. I forgot we need, a, we need a look at it. OK, coming over. So all we have to do here, it's completely an offline site. So we just have to go to this site in our web browser. Oh. Fat fingered it. And we see the complete documentation site built out. So if we were to go to, let's actually zoom out slightly here. There we go. We can go to the docs, and this is the, this is the actual documentation that we were just looking at in the screenshot. OK, it keeps wanting to resize it. But uh, yeah, we, ha we have everything here, and we can navigate different pages. And we don't even have to be running a web server. So it's totally designed to be viewed offline. And you'll notice we have Couchbase Server 6.0, but we don't have any other versions. So let's go back to the terminal. And let's add another version. So we just say release 6.0, and let's go with release 5.5. Now, since we've run Antora once already, the repositories are warm. So we know that we don't actually have to clone them again. So we can just run Antora directly. And so now what it's doing is it, it first, it just visited the 6.0 branch. But then we just told it, all right, also visit the 5.5 branch, aggregate that content, and pull it together. And like I had mentioned, Antora then not only visits those branches, but it actually tracks the fact that that page is now available in more than one version. And it knows that, and it can pass that into the UI. Now, the UI can make decisions about what to do. OK, my computer got really slow all of a sudden. Go. There we go. All right, so now if we refresh, now we have two versions of the docs. So as a tech writer, you can just enable the version you're working on, or you can enable a broader version. So you, you can easily fine tune what's actually being built in the site. Now, what happens if we want to edit? All right, so now what we do is I've already cloned in this other folder that repository. So if I go into the playbook, and I might, uh, you can have multiple playbooks. So I might actually have a separate playbook for this, but for now we're going to change this one. So I just say doc server, and let's just build 6.0. Now, if we go to workspace doc server, we see that the current branch is release 6.0. So we could go in to one of the pages. Let me get the right page here. Introduction, intro, pages, intro. 
and then we say hi devox. All right, now let's go back out. And I might have these open in different windows. All right, and then we build that out. At the moment, there isn't a, um, a file watcher, but it, that'll be the next step for us is to add a file watcher. You can just run Antor continuously. Okay, so now if we go back to Y Couchbase, we see high DevOps. So that's how you're editing. So you can, I'm using both remote repositories and local repositories, and the playbook can kind of manage all of that. And the last thing that I'll, I'll show you is that if we went to Oh, the brain's not working here, okay. It, the net, so the nav file that's on the left-hand side that keep clicking on the navigation, that's also just an ASCII doc file, it's just a simple list. But the reason I point this out is it shows you we have a XREF syntax, um, or XREF uh, expression language, so that you can refer to different files. So in this particular case, I can refer to a file that's in a module, and a page that's within that module, et cetera. So there's, there's a way, it under, you understand that you're m building more than just uh, one component. And so here I could say another component at and then some sort of page. So the, you can address any page within the entire documentation site using this syntax. Just to give you an idea of what the scale Antor is trying to provide. So if you're exploring solutions for building your docs, um, that you want to integrate into your software development process, I really encourage you to evaluate Antora. And you can find the slides and the transcript for this particular talk online at the URL at the bottom of the page. So thank you very much for your attention, and um, best of luck. <laughs>